E hello and welcome to episode 60 of Kids Six, 60? 60 is freaking crazy, dude. Today is Thursday, 2nd of May at 3 o'clock. And I just canceled the podcast I was supposed to record with Ar- Arvid. And because I, I'm still sick and I'm, I can record my own podcast and be a slog and then drag and be like, oh no, my throat hurts and I want to die and blah, blah, blah. But I didn't want to re- show up with this energy to someone else, to some, uh, someone else's uh, podcast. So sorry, Arvid, we're going to reschedule when I'm back from Macedonia. Uh, Arvid is cool about it. He's honestly one of the coolest people when it comes to communicating and shit. I want to learn a little bit from him to not be a piece of shit and asshole to others. I got to get there. But it's it's a very ha- hard level to achieve for me. As like my my temper, my patience is like this. Like, dude, having this slack empty today and yesterday when the assistant is not spamming with hi, how can I help you? That's spam for me. No, shut up. Like, I don't want any. <laughs> like, I enjoy when there's nothing happening on Slack. No one is asking me to review a PR. No one is like, hey, kids, uh, did you do the thing? Shut up. All of you. Like, I go on Slack and I just see like a cool breeze. Like, and I'm like, oh no, I'm I'm you know. My throat still hurts. I shouldn't be like, it's cold here. And I close Slack because it's like a cool breeze just running. There's no like ping, 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 pong. So fucking annoying. People are annoying. Like I, you cannot work without people, but everyone is fucking annoying. That's what I'm saying. Um, Yeah. Do you know what? I'm so fucking tired of doing this intro. I don't even know who I'm doing it for. In this podcast, I'm talking about farts and shards. Like who gives a shit, dude? I'm going to skip it. And especially when I'm sick, I'm not going to do the intro. Hi, I'm Kitsev. Find shit about me in the description. It's not like... Some no one is gonna listen to this coming from the algorithm. I guess people do if there's like a catchy title like I'm tired of ADHD and people are like, oh, let me see what this scientist have to say. And then I'm making jokes about farts and shots and they're like, what the fuck? And they close it anyway. So why am I doing the intro when you guys know who I am? Right? It's fucking pointless. I just had a bunch of chicken soups. So it's gonna be hard to talk. I'm still I'm still dealing with this fucking shit. Um, yesterday, like when I. I'm still working though, right? I feel fucking tired, but I'm not taking enough rest. Yesterday after work, like I just climbed out of this dungeon upstairs and I'm like, oh shit, it's not only the throat and the coughing. I feel a little bit under the weather, so I might as well go to sleep. And I go to the bedroom. Dude, it's outside in Poland right now. It's 18 degrees. But if you go out in the sun, it feels like it's 34 somewhere else. And inside the house, like the top floor is 27 degrees. So I <laughs> so I go in the fucking bedroom and I turn around trying to look for the timer thingy the sand clock and i'm like oh why is it not here it's obviously a fucking sauna right i play sauna music like zen music with like ding 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 sounds because i'm like oh fuck i'm so tired that i by mistake i entered the sauna oh no it's our bedroom kill me so i mentioned this that last year we had a chance of do we make this room our bedroom or do we make the other room our bedroom and the previous owners of the house normally made the correct one because it's on the other colder side of the house and we were like nah this one is cooler so cooler Uh, i mean cool it looks cooler but it's hotter because the sun is heating up the the side the that side of the house so when i'm now i'm sick and i don't want to sleep in the cold but i just researched yesterday and chat gpt says i mean this is like old fucking news uh that the best temperature for humans to sleep in is 18 degrees and like even when it wasn't summer and it's not this hot in uh in it's i'm amazed that i'm connecting the words poland and summer together it's like fucking weird um our bedroom was always 22 23 i guess that's good for the kid for the baby to sleep in but it's not good for me so what i'm planning when we come back from macedonia if it's still boiling like this i'm gonna pump up a mattress that i have i bought a travel mattress that fits the tesla model 3 um in the back when you put down the seats like it's exactly the shape for the tesla model 3 because i thought me and my wife when we got the car we're gonna go on adventures on trips we never went anywhere and that mattress stayed in the garage until now and yesterday i popped it up and i'm like but if i sleep right now on 80 degrees i might increase this cold so fuck it but when this is back to you i'm not sleeping in 28 degrees i'm pretty sure that you can sleep as many hours as you want and you're still not gonna wake wake up rested if the temperature is above 23 24 it's like boiling in there so I went to sleep yesterday, boiled for a few hours, woke up around 6 to 7 p.m. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do now? Just, I, I Even if it was 7 p.m., I didn't work, but I was still on my laptop, just a little bit on Twitter, on five-minute intervals. I'm pretty, I'm pretty disciplined when it comes to this app, Come Back Later. Uh, a lot of times I hate it when I'm in the middle of a hard task and I want to go on Twitter and I open Come Back Later and it tells me to come back later in 30 minutes. I'm annoyed. But then as... I'm working on my task and as I'm solving bugs and whatever, it feels like at the end of this task, I'm going to get a reward, which is five minutes of Twitter. And I really like the dynamic and I'm not craving for more Twitter time. I'm not unblocking my extensions or logging in or whatever. I, I just keep using my app. So anyway, I was just a little bit on Twitter, a little bit on YouTube, Reddit, whatever. 
uh, doing some tasks, checking our flights from Macedonia, wondering what the fuck was up with the flights, calling the company. They're telling me you used another email. I'm like, but you forgot to send me free glazing and sprinkles because I'm a giant donut. And I couldn't fucking relax. It was like 10 p.m. And until 10 p.m., I haven't sat down like a sick person sitting down with soup to watch a show or something. Actually, I had... No, but that was still with YouTube, which still feels like I want to do something even when I'm not doing something, you know? Like even on YouTube, it feels like... Uh, if I press the J key and the L key, just jumping back and forth and increasing the speed and reading the comments, it feels more like an activity, like I'm doing something. I'm researching, I'm researching about this rap battle between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. It's not research, but it tricks your brain that you're active. If I'm just with the, with, with the plate in front of the TV, just eating and watching something, it feels very passive. Like I just play the show and I don't skip back and forth. I'm not doing anything. And God, I got to go back to that mode where I was able to just game or watch a show or watch a movie and not craving for something active, even even when I'm fucking sick. So then I went to sleep around, I don't know, my laptop died, so I was like, you're not going to take this to bed with a charger fucking. I made progress on the Hill, Hill Mary book, which my wife is joking, I'm reading this book for like two fucking years, and at this point, honestly, the ending is a little bit repetitive. I don't want to spoil shit, because it's one of the best books, but I think... I'm tired of it because I dragged it for so fucking long and the sciencey stuff is like, oh, we're going to take two grams of syndrome and then f with four things with the oxygen percentage and what I'm like, I know you guys are going to survive in the end, so stop sweating my balls and let's get to the fucking end of the book, you know? But it's a miracle that I read yesterday. I watched this video from, um, what's it called? Sahil Bloom. Because I want to get on this 5 a.m. shit, dude. I gotta, I, I'm even thinking of, because Benji has check-ins, like every time that you open Benji for the first time in the day, it greets you with a daily check-in and it tells you uh, what place you are uh, in the day. So it tells you if you're like number one, number 13, number 20, number whatever. I got to fix the time zone shit in there because I think there's some time zone issue. But I want to form a group of people on Benji and call it like the 5 a.m. club. And you can only be in the club if your check-in consistently is at five o'clock but i guess motherfuckers will be able to check in if they want but why would someone want to be in the club if they check in and then they continue going to sleep like it doesn't make sense anyway i want to make this a thing i tweeted and it, it like it, i received a lot of feedback from people who are either doing this or they want to do it they're like um this was, someone was like this will complete your metamorphosis into a father because it's a dad thing to wake up early, crush the day, blah, blah, blah. So I was watching Sahil Bloom, who does this thing. He wakes up at 4.30, and I watched a video that explains this from him yesterday. He said he's been doing it since college, which is absolutely insane. And he had a quote in, in his video saying, you never met a loser that wakes up at 5 a.m. And I think, you know, my, I'm racking my brain. I'm like, no, I... And he's fucking right. Like, if you wake up at 5 a.m., you're already way too different than other people who will wake up at 10, then grab TikTok, then Instagram, then you know, whatever they're going to do, and then just start working at 11 or 12. You're way ahead of them. So I've been thinking that I'm not going to let my life pass by. Just like, even though right now I'm working, right now I'm working like 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and then 2 o'clock to 3 was my workout when I'm not sick, and then 3 uh, o'clock I'm doing like quick sauna, cold shower, then I record the podcast, and 4 p.m. I'm done with my workday and gym, which is like I'm already ahead of some people who will like come back from work at five, then spend some time, then go at the gym and they'll be done with everything at seven. So I have a few hours, but I'm like, what if we push this even further? And in the morning, like I, I noticed that in the morning, I hate that I have to walk my dog. Like this morning, I didn't want to walk him because I'm, you know, like sick and tired and everything. But I look at him and I'm like, I'm going to a toilet, the poor creature. Like I let him in the yard, but he's like, he'll go in the yard for like one meter and he'll come back home and look at me. He's like, I want to go for a walk, motherfucker. So I don't want to deal with any of that. I don't want to deal with food, snacks. Like I always have a tray full of shit here on the table because every, every after every Benji Pomodoro, I go upstairs and grab some pistachios or nuts or whatever. I'm like, what if we eliminate all of that? And I just woke up at 5 a.m. I go to the toilet while some coffee is brewing. I get some coffee, of course, instant and decaf, no other coffee. And then until 11 a.m., I just work. Like, I'll tell my wife to let out the dog. And until 11 a.m., I don't think about food. I don't think about snack breaks. I'm fasting until 11 a.m. Like, naturally, my fasting rhythm is going to be better. And I finish all of my work. No gym, no nothing. I might do uh, an exception only for walking on a treadmill. And I think it's going to be a nice thing to wake me up because Sahil was saying in his video that it's a bit hard to be, you know, full of energy in the morning. And if you drink coffee, it's going to take like 30 minutes for the coffee to enter your system and also the body needs to naturally wake up so he suggests like a set of exercises called like 530 like, oh, i hate people when people invent shit and they coin the term you gotta try the 530 45 method <clears throat> like you just put four numbers together like relax you're not lost the tv show even in the tv show they didn't mean anything 
I just hate that I haven't finished the TV show because people were complaining. It's a bad ending. How the fuck do you know? Maybe I'll, I'm going to watch Lost today. No, I don't have the patience to sit down and watch something anyway. So he was doing the 5, 30, 45, 7, 4.5 exercises, like a little bit of push-ups, lunges, squats, um, dips, whatever. Um, and um, I think it would be a good idea if I just wake up, toilet, coffee, get on a treadmill, walk for an hour, get sweaty, quick shower. Like the shower should just be five minutes, no sauna, no other bullshit in between. And while I'm drying with my bathrobe and whatever, I continue working. So the only technically, the only break would be like five to 10, 50, let's say 15 minutes would be lost to, you know, just a shower and back and forth and, and whatever. The rest of it would be focused work until 11 o'clock. Just, just the thought of being over with work at 11 o'clock is fucking amazing. I just looked myself in the OBS realizing I look ridiculous with the fucking... Anyway, um, I have to also pause a lot because I'm coughing. What the fuck was I saying? Yeah, just, just the thought that it's 11 a.m. It's not even noon. Dude, when it's noon, fuck it. Like, after I see noon, after I see, like, 12.01, like, I, I already just glanced at the clock, and I'm like, oh, shit, the day's over. I might as well finish it now. You, like, for me, it's it's game over. I feel like for my work days, there's, like, two hours left, and I'm like, oh, what else am I going to do today, blah, blah, blah. But by 11, dude. And then I can, like, immediately take my dog for his long walk and take my daughter also while I'm at it. Um, so take both of them for like a two hour, no, like a one hour walk, then come back. And then I can also, it will free up my wife's time to be able to prepare the lunch more easily or do stuff around the house. Because right now, if I'm stuck from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. down here with my uh, working and workout and everything, she doesn't have anyone to help her with the baby. Like she's juggling, she's managing somehow, but it would be nicer if I'm available um, after 11 a.m. So I take her for a walk for one hour, then I come back, then maybe I put her in the carrier, we do some stuff around the house because I hate the feeling that after lunch you want to rest a little bit and then you cannot just continue resting with the day. What you got to do is you got to take care of your chores, like call a flight company, do something, check in flights, plan, trip, whatever. Like there's always chores and errands, throw garbage, pack boxes, whatever. There's shit to be done. And my goal would be to be done with all that shit before lunchtime. Let's say if lunchtime is 4 p.m., like now I have like from 11 to 4 p.m. to um, take care of my daughter, to spend some time with her, with the dog in the yard. Like it's the nice part of the day and we're usually spending it locked in the fucking office, you know? Like you'll be locked here and then like 4 or 5 p.m., there's sunset, like the temperature goes down and you cannot do all the activities that I would be able to do. Like if we prop up the pool soon and everything, I'll be able just to chill, you know, when it's like the warmest, when it's like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, I'll be able to just... Go for a swim, take my daughter, take my dog, like go crazy. It would be, it's a it's a nice vision. Like I tried yesterday in the middle of my sweat, like sweaty night, I just woke up and I'm like, Alexa, what is the time? And dude, it blows my mind when Alexa whispers back. It's like fucking amazing. Um, it's creepy and amazing at the same time. And Alexa is like, it's 4 a.m. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm starting the 4 a.m. club. And I'm like, set an alarm at 5 a.m. And the alarm rings at 5 a.m. And I want to take Alexa and just smash her to fucking pieces because I'm sick and I cannot wake up. But I, I think it's going to be a struggle waking up at 5, especially if I don't go to bed at, at time, uh, on time. It's going to be a struggle. But if I do, dude, it's going to be the best fucking thing ever. So I have this vision that I'm going to be done with... Um, with some chores by 4 p.m. Like, basically, the goal is, after we're done with lunch and shit, I don't even want to think about my to-do list. I don't want to think about, oh, but I didn't call that company. Oh, I didn't go to the place. The place is locked. It's uh, after business hours, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to think about any of that shit. I just want to be done and then just spend. Then we have, like, from 4 o'clock to... Well, technically, I have the entire time from 11 to, like, 9 p.m. If I go to bed at 9 p.m., like, there's way too many hours of the day just free to do whatever the fuck I want. This tells me to upload podcast. Shut up. Uh, yeah, so it sounds like a nice fantasy. And I think why it got popular on Twitter is because people, when they read something like this, they actually confuse it with them doing it. Then they're confusing me with actually doing it just because I'm tweeting about it. Like, if you want to follow someone who actually does it, follow Sahil because he has the proof behind him. He's been doing it since college. And now he's uploading these vlogs like 4 fucking 30 a.m., waking up, going that cold plunge. Like, that's a fucking badass. Don't listen to someone who's about to do it. Like, to me, it sounds like a fantasy. But I really don't see any other way. Like, this is going to drive me crazy. If I finish work at 4 p.m. and then I'm like, oh, let me go to the pool. Oh, it's already colder. Oh, whatever. Like, the, the day is kind of over and I'm not doing anything smart after 9 p.m., 10 p.m. Like my daughter goes to sleep around 8.30, 9, sometimes 9.30. Sometimes she'll stare at us at 10, like, hey, the day's just started, guys, let's do something. But I think it would be nice if I align the time that I go to bed with her. And then like 11 a.m. is like too early in the day. She's barely gonna be done with breakfast and whatever. I'm like, ta-da, Dada is here, let's do shit together. 
it, it sounds amazing. Let me know if you're doing this or you know anyone who's doing this. Um, I, I'll keep daydreaming about it. I cannot start it now because now I'm sick. Then we're going to Macedonia. I'm not going to be the person who wakes up at 5 a.m. with my in-laws and like, hey, guys, let's do breakfast and start, you know, pots and pans and a bunch of other shit. But maybe it's not a bad idea if I do that in Macedonia. I'll be able to wrap up with my coding and work until 11 a.m. That's basically while everyone is, you know, has their coffee and whatever. I'll be like, I'm done with work and then we can do whatever we want in Macedonia. So maybe it's not a bad idea to to start it now. Like, I don't know, like just if I make it into a feature in Benji, like groups or whatever, like I want, I've been thinking for a long time, just making a groups feature in Benji. Let me know if you have ideas around this. Like my half brainstorm idea is like people who want to achieve similar goals and then we have like people falling off from the group let's say each group would be 10 members max and at first they're randomized or whatever and um died from coughing uh at first they're randomized and uh then they fall off as they're not completing their habits so let's say we make a 5 a.m club and we say we're gonna do this this and that blah 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 and if someone doesn't do it for let's say two three days they just fall off the group and they cannot join the same group again someone else tries to re-enter their spot and eventually the group gets only members who are like super consistent and they're motivating each other into pursuing their goals like this is very rough you know blueprint of the idea that I have but I gotta think about it more because I think I created Benji um, to be like a social thing but I don't think that the social aspect of it is you know uh, develop that much because there's like only three people posting on a timeline even though there's like more people using it i think more people are using it privately than they're using it publicly and i don't blame them because everything is private by default and even the timeline feature was disabled by default so just finding how like whatever yeah so 5 a.m sounds like a nice uh dream what else so i woke up today uh, around 8 a.m and I started working, um, the tea and the soup and none of the shit helped, so I, I think I'm gonna go to the doctor tomorrow just to give me something stronger, because on, on Monday we're traveling and I gotta be in, in a good shape, uh, what else did I wanna say, yeah, so I worked today, like, it's, you know, people complain about, uh, my boss told me what to do this week, and I hate when my manager tells me and whatever, but dude, sometimes, like, it's better for someone to tell, like, I would actually pay for someone to tell me like, hey, I looked at all of your things and blah, blah, blah. These are the four things that you got to finish today. It's like such a relief to know that without thinking like anytime I work on something, I'm just with half of my brain, I'm just constantly thinking what else is falling apart out there. But if someone confidently tells me, hey, I've looked at everything. Don't worry. You got to do A, B and C today. It would be like a, such a fucking big relief. I guess that would be the assistant um role but it's I, I i i don't know sometimes it would be nice you know to have a boss and the boss tells you this is what you got to do and don't worry about anything else because i always start the week and then i start my days just with chaotic mm, let's just roll the dice and see what i need to work on um i want to be more focused on that make more money goal but right now i can because the app sumo thing launch is like right around the corner and I need to wrap up that Sizi update that I started. So AppSumo people reported three bugs in Sizi. Two of them cannot even be reproduced in like the craziest scenarios. I fixed those bugs. Then I opened a can of worms when I'm like, huh, developing on Sizi is interesting. How about we add a dependencies manager? How about we add a scripts runner? How about we run your backends and whatever, all of those shits in Sizi? How about we improve the project switcher? I built an entire Git client into the project switcher. I... Like I added so many things and for something I needed a pop-up and I'm like, hmm, let me use next UI. I added Tailwind. I rewrote like half of the app in Tailwind. And now I'm left with like 15 open tasks and they cannot easily be packaged into an update. So yesterday and today I've been grinding through trying to package those things into an update. And it's a grind because at the end of the day, I cannot release anything. I'm not in a shape to record demo videos and whatever right now. Um, and I just feel empty at the end of the day. I'm like, this didn't move me forward. This didn't move the needle forward. This didn't bring me more money. This didn't, di didn't do anything, especially dealing with some nasty electron bugs and whatever. I tweeted this tweet about an app called Shut Up, like the beeper thingy. Every time I talk to you, I think the more you talk and the faster you talk, the faster this thing gets triggered. Because when I'm not talking, it's just chilling around 800, 900. Every time I start a podcast, it's like, maybe it's telling me to stop. Maybe it's time to end the podcast. Thanks to this RNF fucking bullshit the fuck was I saying? Yeah, I listened to the My First Million podcast yesterday and they were um, exploring an app called Look, let me find this. I gotta, I gotta fucking show you this thing, dude. Look, Max AI, kill me. Don't give these people money. Like, please, for the love of everything, 
don't give them money. This is actually fucking legit insane that people are paying money for this. Um, it blows my mind and it makes me sad, but it is what it is. So this is the freaking app. Um, you, like it's number 36 in, I don't know which category, but it's number 36 in the app store. Wait, was it, am I opening the right one? I think, I think this is the right one because it had comments and reviews, but maybe it's on the web version, not here, whatever. Become a chat with looks max. Take a selfie and get personalized result. Your result analyzed with AI. Masculinity 98, jawline 48. Like people believe this fucking shit. Because when you press get your score, I haven't installed this, just listening on a, to their podcast. When you press get your score, it shows a pop-up that you got to pay $3.99 per month. And a lot of people probably forget that they're paying uh, per month. So they think it's a one-time thing. And also, even though you pay, other features are locked by extra payments so whoever fucking thought of this shit and basically it will tell you you can use shampoo two times per week or you can avoid para paraben and sulfate i cannot read it because it's too small sulfate conditioners and you can incorporate scalp massages into your routine like it literally gives you like it probably sends this to gpt vision and it gives you sort of random bullshit scores i don't even know how they convince gpt to actually give you scores on a face maybe they just pull some random fucking numbers from their ass and then it tells you how you can improve and it literally it's a habit tracker just checking whether you you fix your hair or bought clothes or whatever so you look to your to your max and they mentioned on the podcast that this app makes 1.6 million in arr and here i am today like spending my entire fucking day sick working on a fucking bullshit electron sissy whatever like everything you want to do dude in this code base i guess this is the this is what you get when i've been too forgiving throughout the years no code reviews even when someone, like, even when Praneet requested a code review from me, I'm like, ah, it should be fine, it should be fine. So I always approved everything, and now when I look at the code base, I'm like, what in the flippity fuck has happened here? Like, you want to show a little prompt, actually, that's not Praneet's, that's Zico's fault, but you, the code is, like, so involved in, like, so many things that, you know, just being so deep into that, and then you go on Twitter, and you read some bullshit like this, someone else is making a fart app, and they're making 1.6 million, I'm like, I should just erase everything and start grifting apps. Like, fuck, making a life OS, dude, and making a browser for developers who are, like, ungrateful fucks who are going to be like, oh, no, dude, I'm just going to use Arc, which has, like, one bar with a screenshot button, and they call it developer mode. Like, it feels like, what the fuck am I, am I doing with my life, dude? It's, like, it's so fucking annoying. So, yeah, that was annoying to listen to. I didn't even finish the episode yesterday. I'm like, no, 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 I cannot. Like, sometimes, you know, I'm like, no, no, no I don't want to listen to this. Like, no, I don't want to. That's not real. They, they invented numbers. No one is making that much money from a bullshit app like this. Why would people pay? But I think they mentioned that this went viral with teenagers and there have been many cases. Like, what is this guy called? Nikita Beer. Like, he's cracked the code of how to get virality by apps spreading in high schools. He had some apps like, uh, guess who is your crush and whatever. And you gotta, like, I don't fucking know what is the logic behind them. But basically, there was some term like playground virality or something where it's like, some most kids feel left out if the other kids are using an app and they're like oh what is this and the app just goes viral without the developer doing much which is never going to be the case with a browser for developers no kid is the, on the playground is going to be like oh what is this browser that you're using dude oh it's easy oh my god are you still using arc you donut <laughs> and all the kids are laughing to the one using arc in reality is the other way around but Let's just ignore that because marketing is hard, dude. Marketing is a job. You got to hire a person. If everyone had a Pedro Duarte in their fucking company, life would be fucking peaches for their for, for every startup. But not every startup has the money to pay a Pedro Duarte because everyone needs that role. The founder cannot be that all the time. For example, even if Thomas from Raycast is on Twitter all the time, blah, 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 Pedro is doing the heavy lifting with like the YouTube, the Twitter, the bunch of other things. And I cannot be that person and also be the coding person. For example... Today, I spent the entire day on coding these annoying fucking things. I haven't even checked my to-do list or missive or emails or anything because that's my entire day. If I just go a little bit away from the bugs and then I come back to them, I'm like, I have no fucking idea what was happening. So there goes my entire day. Sometimes the entire week goes like that. So good luck spending time on, on marketing and sales and virality and whatever the fuck, dude. Yeah, so at the end of the day, I'm going to finish this podcast and I'm going to go upstairs and my wife's going to hit me with the same old how was your work day? And I'm like, when I feel sick, plus feel sick of the state of my career, it's like a horrible combination. Dude, these motherfuckers, uh, I was playing a Taylor Swift song, shut up. Like Taylor Swift has, like I cannot make up my mind a lot of times. Like I was borderline gonna tweet today, like who the fuck listens to Taylor Swift? What is wrong with you? Then I remember some lyrics in my head and I just Googled the lyrics from the song and I'm like, damn, this song is a banger. So she has some good songs. After the song, another one starts playing from Benson Boone, whoever the fuck this kid is, dude. 
and I'm like, oh wow, he's you know, in the in the beginning, the song sounds like I met you in a parking lot and you're my crush and whatever they're singing about the same old fucking lyrics, and then he ramps up his voice and he has an actual quality voice. And I'm like, whoa, 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 who the, and I see him on Spotify. He has like almost sixty thousand, no, sixty million listeners. That's like on Eminem, Drake, Kanye fucking level. I'm like, who the fuck is this? And I Google his age. Like I have this issue, like I Google Ed Sheeran age. And then you see these motherfuckers like younger than you and like crushing it. But you're still around the same, you know, age. This kid is 21, dude. 20 fucking one. Probably in two years, he's going to tweet something like, oh no, I'm old. My life is behind me. You have 60 million listeners. How, dude? How do you have the same amount of listeners to fucking... Like, I don't know, Kanye or someone has like a long ass fucking career like Eminem. Just blows my mind. I don't know who's Benson Boone, but kudos. You're going to make like two hits and then people are going to forget about you. <laughs> so salty, dude. So fucking salty. Um, yes. So what else did I... Speaking of music, I wanted to do this in the end, but let's just be, talk about it now. Um, I hate Anthony Fantano but I still click on Anthony Fantano videos. If you don't know who he is, don't fucking YouTube him. He's a music critic who constantly criticizes everything. Everything is a low two. Everything is on scale one to 10. This is a one. This is a four. This is a three. And he had like a video popped up in recommendations. His Apple Music wrapped or Spotify wrapped or whatever. Okay, and I'm like, okay, let's see what do you fucking listen to? And I added three of his bands to a, like a, a playlist. One of them was Lemon Twigs. I listened to two songs and I'm like, this is the, biggest clone of the Beatles I've ever heard of my life this sounds horrible and then I played the second band it's called I cannot make this up it's called the Viagra Boys and I'm like this sounds and then a few songs in I'm like oh my god what is this genre it's an absolute banger so if you need a recommendation so so far on this podcast I've recommended Lil Dicky as an artist and now I've recommended Viagra Boys so I guess get your recommendations from from some other podcast but Viagra Boys actually sounded good even though I don't respect like Melon's opinion I hate when people are constantly haters dude am I the Anthony Fantano of the software world because I've been constantly hating on shit holy shit probably people think this about me but I'm a nice guy trust me your product sucks um what else did I want like I, I keep saying for this I'm gonna show you the Benji Trips feature I'm gonna show it to you now I, I always leave it for the fucking end I'm gonna show it to you now whatever um so what is the Benji Trips feature? If you haven't explored it, if you're a pro user, you can go to your trips and you already have access to all of this. So the Benji Trips feature looks something like this. So these are all of my, if you go to trips, you'll get like trip, uh, trip activities, packing items, stays and transports. And then you have a list of all of your upcoming um, trips. So what's nice about this is once I have defined my trip activities. So we have vlogging, Driving a car, swimming, beach, Benji, essentials, gaming, podcasting, speaking at a conference, working, workout, stretching, a bunch of things for my daughter, uh, hygiene, entertainment, medicine, winter clothes, summer clothes, Stefan eating on trip, flying, cooking, Stefan on a beach. So these are all the activities we might do on a trip. Trip. And then we have like, if we go to vlogging and I go to edit this, no, how do I do that? I go here. Like these are all the things that I need for vlogging. Or if we go to, I don't know, driving a car, I need my driving license and a navigation magnet as an optional thing. Or if I do podcasting, I need my mics and I need a bunch of other shit. So you define these things once and then you can go to trips. And let's say I go to this uh, Macedonia trip and you will see like, Whoa, like this nice dashboard for the trip. So this gives you, this is still not the full vision that I have for trips, but it's getting there. So what this gives you is on the left, it gives you projects that are connected to this trip. So basically, I have this project that we've called Main Macedonia. So this is part of my to-do. So in to-dos, we have projects. I have this project called Main Macedonia. And here we wrote some description that my parents are coming back and some plan, blah, blah, blah. This is not relevant anymore because we already booked all the things. Then we have things that we got to do specifically for this trip. Like we got to buy another car seat and explore hotels in Warsaw and book a hotel and take some picture to, to Macedonia. So this is just specifically for the project called May in Macedonia. And then you can add as many projects as you want. So I have this project called Before Macedonia Trip. So let me explain this one. I know I'm going a little bit on a, on a tangent, but I have to e explain to you this one. So I added a new feature to to-dos and you might ask, oh, cool. Is it in the change log? No, it's nowhere. I just added it. It's something amazing. And then I just don't even, you know, bother with it. So now you can mark some of your projects as templates and you'll be able. So first of all, I added this feature for duplicating projects. So you can just go to any projects and just easily duplicate it. But I'm like, I don't need to duplicate a project because that one will have a bunch of things. I want to mark some projects as templates. So once you mark a project as a template, let's say you can edit this one and you can uh, go here and just mark it as a template. It's going to appear here. So I have a uh, create trips from template. I have two templates for now, after trip template and before trip template. So these are things that I always want to do before and after 
uh, a trip. So let's say I'm going to generate a project from this template called before trip template. And unfortunately, this is going to go in to do, not in progress. So I got to go and find it. Okay, so I found it and I'm going to rename it from before trip. Uh, no, this is before trip template. I need the one, the, the cloned one. Yeah, this one, before trip template duplicated. So I can edit this one and I can say before Macedonia trip. So now this has a list of all the things that we need to do. Like I haven't added the assignees properly. So some of the things are for both of us. Some of the, the things are for me. Some of the things are for my wife. So we need to do a bunch of things around the, um, the house. And then we have a similar thing for when, after we come back from a trip, we got to turn the heating back on, turn some home automation, automations, and a bunch of other shit that has to uh, have to be done after a trip. So now that we have this before Macedonia trip, we can go back to the trips and I can go here and edit the Macedonia trip. And here I'm going to add. So this is what my trip looks like. So we have Macedonia, we have the locations, uh, we have the activities, like what are we going to do there? So you can just choose the activities and the packing list is going to be compiled from the activities you're going to do there. And then you can add stays and transports, which I still haven't added. This is just basically logging your uh, flight, hotel, number, key, seat on the airplane, whatever. I did it for the previous trip in Barcelona. It was great. And now I connected these two projects, main Macedonia and before in Macedonia trip. So now when I go into the um, trip and remove this sidebar, on the right side, I can see all the packing things and I can be like, okay, we got to pack this, we got to pack this, we got to pack this. Okay, this is packed. Now we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. And I can see the packing overall progress and my wife can also check things in here. So because all of these activities and trips and everything is shareable, so all the packing list and everything else is shareable. So for example, I've shared the things about my daughter with my wife, like everything for Stephanie is shared with my wife, but everything that's only personal for me, like essentials, I don't share this with my wife. There's no need to share this one with my wife. So we can both check things and we can see the mutual progress. And at the same time, we can check things off from the projects, both for before Macedonia trip and the other one for main Macedonia. So a day before the trip, we should be done with everything in here. And then we know that this trip is finalized and everything is done. So I want to make this a little bit more advanced that in the future, this will be able to pause your habits according to your trips, pause your, I don't know, um, like, because Benji is like an OS, let's call it, and he has access to all of your shit, like medicine and fasting and blah, blah, blah. It can, you can set some rules, like during a trip, I want you to cancel my fasting goals and my habit streaks and blah, blah, blah. Um, I would like personally for me to cancel my calendar events because I was annoyed when we were in Barcelona and I was constantly getting bombarded on my phone, like time to record podcast, time to do this, time to do that. And I don't want to go and delete like 50 events one by one because it's a recurring event. So I either delete all of the events forever or I need to delete the one for Tuesday, the one for Wednesday. And if you're there for like two weeks, I just want to pause an event from A to B and Google Calendar and any other app doesn't have that. But in Benji, I can easily make it a setting like pause this event during a trip. So, or only do this event at a location, meaning the location is home. So if I'm not home, don't show that in my calendar. It can get a little bit crazier. I'm super hyped to actually develop this feature um, further. And I cannot show it to you right now because it's gonna um, take a while, I guess. But it was really nice when I could see my flight information with the seat and everything in the hotel and the stay, like on that trip dashboard is super fucking cool. Anyway, uh, I should finally make a YouTube channel for Benji. I made a YouTube channel for Benji and I should talk about these things there, even though I'm excited to show you some of these things here on the podcast. And I guess that concludes um, everything for today. I don't have anything else uh, to add, I think I haven't been checking my habits. I haven't been uh, working out. I'm walking my dog, so that's good. Um, I watched an episode of Modern Family yesterday. Still one of the best shows ever. If you haven't watched that one, don't let the, the picture of it fool you. Because when you look at the picture, you may oh, it might be lame, but it's it's fucking hilarious. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the other channel, Kids of Productivity. You have everything in the description. Do your homework. Who is the singer of Chandelier? See ya, you donuts.